Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Lamed Gimel of Mesechta Psachim, Daf uh, 33. Um, today we are discussing some of the memorable things that we're discussing are the punishment for Me'ila on purpose. I guess it sounds not so exciting, right? Punishment for Me'ila, but I've been waiting for this for such a long time. So, yeah, all right. And then um, truma of grape juice. Yeah, also kind of interesting. Did I say truma? Tuma of grape juice. Well, I guess it also kind of maybe connects to truma somehow. But yeah, everything kind of comes back to truma, I guess, in the big picture. Let's go weiter. So we're starting on that flamin bays and bays about 15. No, that's maybe a little much. Maybe like 13 lines from the bottom of the page. But for Papa Hader Bay. So now this is a continuation of the machlokas that we began, that we ended with yesterday. So there's machlokas between Abba Shaul and the Chachamim regarding truma. If you eat truma by accident, so you have to pay karen v'chomish, you have to pay the principal, the amount that, the, the value of the, uh, of what you ate, plus, uh, 25% more, what's called the chomish. Now there's machlokas between the Tanakam and Abba Shaul. Tanakam says you have to, to be chay of a karen v'chomish, you have to eat a kezayis of truma. And according to Abba Shol, um, you have to eat enough truma that has the value of a pruta. Now, the question was, Abba Shol, when he says it has to have the value of the pruta, is that in addition to a kezayis, or is that in lieu of a kezayis, instead of a kezayis? So, Rav Papa had initially had, had said that Abba Shol's opinion is that, is that in addition to the requirement that the truma be a kazai, that, that, that he eat a kazais of the truma, it also has to be worth at least a pruta. Now we brought a brysa to, against, against Rav Papa, and now the Gemara starts off by saying that Rav Papa Haderbe, that even Rav Papa actually retracted. How do we know this? So here we go. Titania, as we learn in a brysa, it says in the, in the context of, uh, me'ila. What's me'ila? Who can tell me what me'ila is? Me'ila is when you get benefit from, from, from Kodesh, from something that's, that's hectic, right? If uh, you have a Corbin or something like that, if you get benefit in a, in an unsanctioned way. So that's what's called Me'ila. So now Me'ila has to be done by accident. If you do Me'ila by accident, if you accidentally get benefit from, uh, from hectic, so then you bring an Oshem Me'ilo, so you bring a Corbin. So what, so now, so Vechatu Bishkaga, so in the context of uh, the Korban Me'ila, the Asher Me'ilos, it says V'chata B'shkaga, that you specifically sinned by accident. Prat Lemezid, to the exclusion of somebody who gets benefit from Hakdish on purpose. He would not bring an Asher Me'ilos. Valodinu. Now, the Gemara says, the Gemara asks, or the Brisa really asks, now, how come we need this Brisa? Well, how come we need the Torah to tell us V'chata B'shkaga? How come we need the Torah to tell us that if you accidentally get benefit from Hekdesh, Yuchayev, and Oshemilos, but if you do it on purpose, then you don't bring a Korban? I could just know this logically. How, how would I know logically? Well, by other mitzvahs that have a Chiyiv Kares, such as, as Rashi points out, Chelev, Dam, Right, if I if I eat these forbidden fats or if I eat blood, these are things that I'm chayv karis for. Potuboy and asamezid. Yet if I do if I do it on purpose, then I don't have to bring a korban, and that's like super hardcore stuff. I mean, that's like karis kind of levels. Chelev dam meila sheimba karis. Now meila, which is no chiyuv karis when it comes to meila, even if it's on purpose, you're not chayv karis. Enu din shepatar. It's amazing. So then certainly, if you do it on purpose, you shouldn't have to bring a Corbin, right? So if, so, right, of course, as we know from Masech to Shabbos, things that you generally would be Chayv Karis for, such as Chilol Shabbos, if you do it by accident, you Chayv uh, a Corbin Chatas. So if you would eat um, Chaylev by accident, you would bring a Corbin Chatas. Now, if you eat Chaylev on purpose, you don't bring a Corbin Chatas. Chayv Karis, but you don't bring a Corbin Chatas. Um, now, Me'ila, if you do it by accident, you bring a, 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 an Asher Me'ilos, but um, certainly if you do it on purpose, you wouldn't bring a Korban since, you know, things like Chelev, which are super stringent, if you do it on purpose, you don't bring a Korban. 
So Gmar says that's not necessarily a good assumption. It's not, the logic is not necessarily sound. Don't necessarily assume that just because by chedev and dam, by things that you chayev karis for, if you do it on purpose, you don't bring a korban, that memele, when it comes to um, me'ila, you would not bring a korban on purpose. Because lo'im omart b'shar mitzvah sheken lo chayev ba in misa. Toma b'me'ila shechayev ba in misa. Very interesting um, suggestion of the Gemara. The Gemara then now says that, well, actually, maybe me'ila is actually more stringent than, let's say, eating chaylev. Because by me'ila, if you do it on purpose, you chayev misa b'day shamayim. Misa b'day shamayim is kind of similar to karis. Um, let's just leave it at that for now. So if you, um, if you, um, get benefit from, 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 from Hekdish on purpose, so you chayv misa bide shamayim, and that's like super duper hardcore, or so the Gemara wants to assume. And therefore, even if by chaylev, where you chayv karis, if you do it on purpose, you don't bring a, a, a korban chatas, well that's chayv karis, that's chaylev. But by Mi'ila, we chayv misa bide shamayim, maybe I would think that since it's so stringent, even more so than karis, so maybe there you would bring a korban even if you do it on purpose because it's so darn stringent. Tomar mi'ila shechiyev b'misa, oh. Right, so those things you're not chayv misa bide shamayim, but mi'ila you are. Tamud lomar bishkaga, therefore the Pasuk had to tell us, davka, if you uh, are mo'il, mo'el, I don't know. If you do me'ila by accident, that's when you bring a korban, prat lemezid, but if you do it on purpose, you do not bring a ashim me'ilos, v'amalei Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak, le Rav Chia bar Oven. So Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak to, said to Rav Chia bar Oven, bar Oven, if we go back to Mesech to Shabbos, Mesech to Shabbos actually gave a descriptor uh, for both Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak and for Rav Chia bar Oven. Rav Chia bar Oven was davka on daf kuf yiral from the base. Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak I don't remember where it was, but I could find it, probably. Anyways, who could tell me what they were? Rav Nachum Bar Yitzchak was the Mari de Uvda. They had very good Midos. And Rav Chia Bar was the Arisha Bachabura, the line of the, uh, of the group. Anyways, so, so Rav Amalir Rav Nachum Bar Yitzchak to Rav Chia Bar Oven. Now Rav Nachum Bar Yitzchak says to Rav Chia Bar Oven, Haitanim Eikara Alima Leikara Sulvasof Alima Le Misa. Oh, so maybe if you were wondering this question, so the Gemara asked it for you, which is that initially the Gemara was assuming that Karis was more stringent, and then we're assuming that Misebide Shemaim is more stringent. Right? Initially we're saying that, well, if by Karis you don't bring a Korban on purpose, then, and that's like really, you know, stringent, so then certainly by Mi'ila, which is Misebide, Misebide Shemaim, which is less stringent, you would not bring a korban if you do it on purpose. And then the Gemara says, well, wait, what do you mean? Mi'ila, you chayv misa b'day shemayim. That's really, really stringent, even more so than karis. So therefore, I might think that you would bring a korban if you do it on purpose, even though by karis you don't bring a korban on purpose. So meaning, initially we thought that karis is more stringent, and then we're assuming that, then we're assuming that mi'ila is more stringent. So like, well, like what's going on? So Rav Chia Bar Oven, Says to Rav Nachman by Yitzchak, this is what's going on. Interesting. When it comes to karis, so if you eat chaylev, let's say, so if you eat less than an olive's worth of chaylev, so then you're not, you're, you're, you're off the hook, right? If you eat an olive's worth on purpose, then you're chayv karis. If you eat less than an olive's worth, forget about it. You're not, you're, you're off the hook. It's, you didn't have a proper shear. Toma b'me'ila shechiv b'misa b'pachos mikazayis, right? But, so, 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 but would you therefore apply that to Me'ila where your Chayev Misa B'day Shemaim even less than a Kazayis? Meaning, right, so the Gemara had responded and saying, don't assume that Karis is necessarily more stringent than Me'ila, right? That like Chayev and Dam is more stringent than, than Me'ila because Chayev and Dam, you have to eat a Kazayis before the Chayev Karis kicks in. So therefore, okay, you know, I guess it's string, very stringent once it kicks in, but it doesn't necessarily kick in until you have a kazayis, and therefore, okay, so if you do it on purpose, you don't have to bring a korban chatas. But by me'ila, even if you have less than the shear, even if you have less than a kazayis, 
you're chayev misa b'day shemaim. Therefore, that makes me'ila particularly stringent. And therefore, I might think that even if you uh, do me'ila on, on purpose, you'd bring a korban chatos. That's why we had to, the Pasuk has to say, v'nevesh ki chato b'shgaga, that if you sin by accident, you bring a korban me'ila. But if you do it on purpose, you do not. Right, so Toma from Ila Shachiv, but Misa of Pachos Mikazai's for Omerle, and Rav Nachm Baitzak responded to Rav Chiyabar Avin Tanuach Daitech, may your um, mind be at rest, Shainachta is Daiti, because you brought my mind to rest. The Omerle, to which Rav Chiyabar Avin responds to Rav Nachm Baitzak, and rather than saying, wow, thank you, that's so kind, he says, my Nichusa, what do you mean? I settled your, your mind. The, the Rabbi of Rav Sheshes, Shadu Benarga. Rabbi of Rav Sheshes asked the Kasha on what I just said, that by Mi'ila you'd be chayv misa b'day shamayim, even less than a Kazayas. Man shamasle de Omar hezid b'mi'ila b'misa. Because after all, who is the opinion who says that if you intentionally do Mi'ila, you chayv misa b'day shamayim? Rebbe, it's Rebbe's opinion. The Tanya, as we learn in Abraisa, Hazid b'me'ila, that if a person intentionally got benefit from Hektish, Rebbe Omer b'me'isa. Rebbe says, Yechayv misa b'day shamayim. V'chachom im ba'azhore, where the chachom say it's poshit alav. It's a little saisa. If you do it, we're going to beat you up a shtickle, but uh, you're not chayv misa b'day shamayim. Umay time with the Rebbe. And how come Rebbe says that if you get benefit from hektish on purpose, um, you're chay of misa b'day shemaim? So Amar Babo, Gamer chet chet mi truma, because he learns a gzeir shava from truma. Ma truma b'misa af me'ila b'misa. That just like uh, truma, if you eat uh, truma on purpose, you're chay of misa b'day shemaim. So also, Rebbe wants to argue that by Mi'ila also, if you get benefit from Hektish on purpose, you chayv misa b'day shemaim umino, and then we'll continue to learn the Kavu Chomer further, or to learn the Gzer Shava, Gzer Shava further. Matruma b'kazayis, af Mi'ila b'kazayis. Just like Truma, you are only chayv misa b'day shemaim, or chayv anything really, if you eat a kazayis of it. So the same thing will apply also to Mi'ila, right? So we had wanted to say that, right? So, so Rav Chiyah Ba'avin had answered Rav Nachman Ba'yitzchak and had said that you can theoretically argue that um, Mi'ila is more stringent than Truma because Mi'ila Yuchayim Misa B'day Shemaim even less than a Kazayis. But, says Rabba. And Rav Sheish says that that wouldn't make any sense because who, after all, is the one who says that Yuchai Misa B'day Shemaim for Mi'ila in the first place? Rebbe. And he learns that out from Truma and Truma you have to eat a Kazais. Umas Kifla Rav Papa. And here's the kicker. And Rav Papa asks Akasha on Rav and Rav Sheish Mimai de Rebbe Kirabonan Svirile Dimakab Svirile why are, why, why are we assuming that Rebbe holds like the Chachamim regarding Truma, i.e. that you have to eat a Kazais of it? Maybe he holds like Abba Shaul that what's important is that it has to be a Shavit Pruta even if it's less than a Kazais. And therefore, maybe you could be Chayim Misebidei Shemaim in fact, even with less than a Kazais. Do Amr Yesh Ba Shavit Pruta Afagav Delez Ba Kazais. Because after all, Abba Shaul says that you chayev by truma if you if the truma that you ate is worth a shavu pruta, even if it's less than an olive's worth. Did you guys hear that? Of course you did. So if Papa just said explicitly that according to Abba Shaul, what's important is that it's worth a pruta, not necessarily that it's a kazayis. But didn't Abba, uh, didn't Rab Papa say yesterday? That according to Abba Shaul, you need both, and you need to be a Kazayis, and it needs to be a Shavit Pruta. And over here, Rav Papa is saying that according to Abba Shaul, it would, it wouldn't have to be a, a Kazayis, just a Shavit Pruta. So, Elish Mamino, 
So rather we see that Rav Pope actually retracted from what he had said initially that Abishol would require both a Kezayis and Shavipruta. In the end, uh, Rav Papa admits that according to Abishol, all you would need is a Shavipruta, even if it is less than a Kezayis. My brother Ravna Omar says, My brother Ravna Hachi Kamer. So going back to this, uh, the, the very beginning, right, of this Brisa, when initially we had said that Chelev is very Chamor, and yet you're not Chayev, a Korban, right? So, and certainly by Me'ila, which is uh, maybe arguably Misa Bide Shemaim, you wouldn't have to bring a Korban. And we said that, no, maybe Me'ila is more Chamor than, 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 than Karis, right? That Misa Bide Shemaim maybe is more Chayev than Karis. So, so we had seen how Rav Chibar Avin tried to explain it, or maybe even arguably successfully explained it, which is that what it means is that uh, Me'ila is more stringent because you could be Chayv Misa B'day Shemayim even less than a Kazayis. Now comes Marbre de Ravna to give his own spin on it, which is So Hachi Kamer, this is what it means. Lo Im Amad B'Shar Mitzvahs, when it comes to Karis, Shalo Asa Boyan She'ein Miskavin Ki Miskavin, that we don't treat when you don't have Kavana like when you do have Kavana, meaning, and in a situation when you didn't have Kavana to do something, you'd be Potter. And here's an example. That if on Shabbos, Shabbos, of course, if you're Mechal Shabbos, is a Chiyuv Karis. Shem Niskaven Lach Tochus Atalush. That if you intended to cut something that was already separated from the ground. V'chotach Hasam Achubar. And then what ended up happening was you cut something that was connected to the ground. It's Pashit Misasek. Right? Kilu. You thought that you were gonna, right? You thought that you were doing a Malacha in a Mutter way, cutting something, but you thought you were cutting something that is, was already separate from the ground. Which would be mutter, but what ended up happening was you accidentally ended up, um, without realizing, you ended up cutting something that was connected to the ground. So in that case, you're potter. And so it's a chi of karis, and yet, when you, you know, you, you made a, like, uh, you know, something completely unintentional, so you're going to be potter. shim niskavin nischam bikize chulin, bikizei bikize ola shemoel. Now when it comes to me'ila, even in that case, you'd be, you'd be chayv to bring a korban, right? That shem niskavin nischam begize chulin. That if his intention was to warm up in, in wool of chulin, in just regular wool, b'nischam begize ola, but, uh, without realizing, he, um, ended up getting, a benefit, or what ended up happening was he got benefit from, he warmed up from, from the wool of a korban ola, which is hekdish, shemoal, uh, he has to be in Korban Me'ila. So we see it's more stringent because even in, you know, um, um, uh, I don't know if the word I'm looking for is similar or analog- analogous or, um, yeah, maybe analogous case, or you, I don't know, or a similar case when by uh, Achiv Kars you'd be Potter, by Me'ila you'd be Chayib, which makes Me'ila more Chamor. Rav Nachman by Yitzchak Amar. Says Nachman by Yisro Kalchi Kamar. This is what the Bray says saying Loim Amar B'Sha'ar Mitzvus. When it comes to other mitzvus, i.e. other Chiyuvei Karis, Shkain Lo Mischayi Ben She'ein Misasek Ki Misasek. Okey dokey. We're going even a step further, right? That in a com- place where it was even more completely unintentional, right? In a case where She'im Niskav and Lagbiya Satalosh V'Chotach Hasam Achubar. If he wasn't even intending intending to cut anything, Kilu. In the first case, he was trying to, he was intending to cut something that he thought was separated, and they ended up cutting something that was connected. Okay, but you know, uh, you know, to begin with, he was doing cutting. Cutting, you know, you know, cutting something could be considered a malach, right? Here, he was just picking something up. He wasn't even doing a malach bichlal. And then what ended up happening was he, you know, he 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 ended up uh, separating something from the ground, shepater. And certainly there, when it comes to chiyuv karis, you part toma b'meila shim hoshet yadu lechli that by meila, if he sticks his hand into some kind of vessel, little chayfet to take something out, and then totally by happen chance, v'sach yadu b'shemen, his hand got into some oil in the process, shel kodesh, and that oil just happened to be hektish oil, shemo al, it would be meila. So we see different cases that you can try to argue that meila is more chamor than even karis, and uh, therefore I might think that you'd have to bring a korban even if you do it on purpose, and that's why the pasuk had to tell us that you only bring a korban meila 
if you do it by accident. Omar Mar, we said yesterday, I think it was yesterday, that when we're talking about truma of chametz, right, when you separate truma of chametz, then we had a whole uh, shaila about uh, if you do it by accident, or you chayiv karen v'chomesh, is it the value you're paying, or the amount that you're paying, whatever it was, we said, what exactly are we talking about, you know, when we say separating truma of chametz? So bimafish truma v'achmitza. We're talking about when you separated truma and it was not chametz, and then it became chametz. Aval hefish chametz truma, but if he separated chametz uh, truma that was already chametz, tevehakol in a kedosha. Of course, it is not going to be considered truma. It's not going to be holy. Minani midi. How do we know the summer of Nachum by Yitzchak on my krati ten lo? Says of Nachum by Yitzchak. It says in the pasuk by truma that you have to give it to him. Lo velo leoro. You hear that? That you have to give the truma to him and not to his fire. Meaning you have to separate truma that he can eat, that right, that he can that he can use, not just to put into his fire as firewood. So if you have some food, some tevel, some of the tevel tevel of course is untied food. So if you have tevel, some of it is pure, some of it is impure. So don't say, I have a good idea. Why don't I, the truma that I have to give, I'll just give it from the impure stuff and I'll keep all the pure stuff for myself. So we say, don't do that. Vimtaram bishogeg chumas truma. But if accidentally you gave the Kohen um, this tame uh, stuff as truma, well then it's fine. If you did it by accident, it's okay. Ve'amai. Ask the funabred of Yeshua, why? Why does that work? Why should it make a difference if I did it out on purpose or by accident? What happened to Rav Nachba Yitzchak's drasha, which is that you have to give chuma to the Kohen, not to his fire? That there's a difference between separating chuma from chametz and separating chuma from uh, something that's tummy by accident, which is that when it comes to uh, separating chuma from tuma, right, and you can't eat chuma tamea, right? So, so, at least at some point that produce was not tame. At least at some point that produce was edible before it became tame. Now, when it comes to chametz, it's posh it never, uh, you're not, it was never edible. It's, cham, it's chametz on Pesach. You can't eat it bechlal. Right? We're talking about that, you know, when it became chametz already before you separated chumo and it was already still connected to the, I think we said when it was still be mechubar, but how could something become tame when it's mechubar? Be'achmetz be mechubar. I thought stuff can't become chametz when it's connected. I thought st- stuff can't be- oh, it can become chametz. Yeah, yeah, right. I was thinking tuma, right. Right, chametz, right. It became chametz even when it was still connected to the ground. So it was never, like, actually edible. So that, so that would not work. And what does it mean that it never at any time when it was kosher, kagon, de achmetz bimechubar, that it became chametz already when it was um mechubar. Aval Ahmed's Batalush Achinami de Kadsha, but if when it was already um uh, separated from the ground, it only later became Tame, so then it would um right, and then you separated Truma before it became Tame bef- well before it became Khamitz, so then so then it would be considered good Truma. Omale, to which of Nachman by Yitzchak said, "Wow, this is perfect. It's just like I was saying because there is even Pizgama that in the world, that in the word, that in the rules of the angels are, um, are words. All right, Umaimer Kadish and Sheelta, and in the sayings of the holy angels is um, questions. It's a pasuk in Daniel." And they say in the base of just like me. When Rafuna Breda of Yeshua came, Omar he said, Omar Kra that the Pasuk says Rashis, that in the Pasuk of uh, that in the context of uh, of Truma it says Rashis, it has to be the first Shashiarah Nikar in the Israel. That what's left over is uh, recognizable, is able to be eaten in the Israel, Yatsu Sazosha in Shiarah Nikar to the extent to the exclusion of uh, chametz that the leftovers are not edible, meaning 
that if you have, that when it comes to truma, so you separate truma from tevel, right? You have all this food, you can't eat it. You separate truma, now what's left over you can eat. Now that, so that's kind of part of the definition of truma, that you separate it and whatever is left over you can now eat. Now when it comes to chametz, so you separate the chametz, but you can't eat the rest of it. So it's not, that's not like a whole truma situation. Um, so it wouldn't work. Yosef of Achabai, Rav Avya, Kamidu, Rav Chizda, Yosef, Arav, Mishmedu, Rav Yochanan. And this is kind of interesting if you're into this stuff. So, Yosef of Achabai, Rav Avya, Kamidu, Rav Chizda. So, Rav Achabai, Rav Avya was sitting before Rav Chizda. Fine. Yosef, Arav, Mishmedu, Rav Yochanan. And he was saying something in the name of Rav Yochanan. What was he saying? And listen to this. Anovim shenitmu. So, if you have grapes that became Tomei. Okay, fine. You have a cluster of grapes. The grapes became tummy. Fine. Dorchan pachis pachis mi kibetza. Vienen kashlin isachin. Very interesting. So what do you do? So you have grapes. This is very, very interesting stuff. So you have grapes. Now, the grapes are tummy. But the assumption for now is that the juice inside of them is tahor. Is, is not yet tummy. The outside, the, the, the peels, the grapes are tummy, but the juice is not. Now, we have to be careful. Because when you squeeze out the juice from the grapes, if the juice touches the grapes on the way out, then the juice is going to come tummy is going to become tummy from the grapes. Now, here's the thing: if you remember already, I think from Daflam and Masech the Brachis, and we've seen it uh, several times since then. Tumas Ochlin, the impurity of food is only transferred if the food that's transferring it is the size of an egg. So, therefore, the solution would be. Just take clusters that are less than the size of an egg, and then as you crush them, any water that comes in contact with the with the um, peels, which are tame, the 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 juice. I don't know if I said water, but the juice would not contract the tuma because the the grapes are are less than uh, an egg's worth to begin with. What do you guys think of that solution? Right, so, Yochan, so, 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 Achabar, Rav Avya was saying to Rav Chizda in the name of Rav Yochan that Anovim, I'm going to read it again, grapes, Shinitmu, that became Tami, Dorchan Pachas Pachas Mikibeya. So, so, you can, uh, crush them in cluster, in clusters that are less than an egg's worth. Vyenon Kashir Linisachin. And if you do it like that, then any of the juice from the grapes remain Tahor, and you can use them even on the Mizbeach for the libations. Alma Kasavar, so we see that Rabbi Yochanan holds, Mashkin Mipakid Pkide, that the juice of the grapes are like stored inside of the grape. They're not part of the grape, they're just like being held inside of the grape. And therefore, even though the grape is Tame, the juice itself remains Tahor unless it becomes Tame. Now, Le'emos Kami Tamai, when would this juice become Tame? It would become theoretically tame when you squeeze it and the gra- and the juice is coming out of the grapes and it would become tame. And there and in this case, since we're talking about a cluster that's less than the size of an egg, so when you squeeze the grapes and the juice is coming out, so there is no kibetza of uh, tuma, and therefore the juice would remain tahor. Ihachi, kibetza nami. To which the Gemara asks, wait a second, but then why would we specifically have to have a cluster that is less than the size of an egg? Let me ask you a question. Even if the cluster was the size of an egg, it should still be acceptable to Hatanan because we learned in a Mishnah, Tmei Meis. If we have a Tmei Meis, oh, in Avatoma, Shesachat Zesim Vanovim, and he squeezed olives and grapes, Kibetza Mechuvenis, and the size of the cluster was mamish, exactly an egg's worth. Tihorin. Nonetheless, the juice is grapes. What? The juice is juice. And it is tahor juice, right? And we're saying that if you have a cluster of grapes and it's exactly an egg size, and now you crush them to extract the juice, well, the second that you crush them, you no longer have the size of an egg. And therefore, it's no longer able to transfer tuma. So we see that even if you have exactly the size of an egg, it would be acceptable because by the time you crush them, this size of an egg is now going to be less than an egg and it won't transfer tuma to the juice. Now, therefore, how come Rabbi Yochanan is Davka saying 
that you would have to crush these grapes in clusters of less than an egg's worth can even be the size of an egg. Because by the time you crush it, you're going to make the size smaller by crushing it. So the Gemara answer is awesome to Avad Acha That over there, where we say that um, even if it was the size of an egg, it would be acceptable, that's Bidi Evid. If, the, if, if, the, if this Tmei Mace, if this Rishon, if this Ava um did crush a cluster of grapes and it was the size of an egg, so then, you know, it would work um, Bidi Evid if he already did it. But, um, Rabbi Yochanan, however, is making a recommendation of Lichatchila. What should he do? Lichatchila, you should use a cluster that is less than a uh, kibetza. Because Gezer Adom Asil Mebad Yosem Kibetza, um, out of concern that if, you know, if we say that he can use a cluster of exactly an egg's worth, uh, it's risking it because he might end up using a cluster that's more than an egg's worth, in which case the juice that comes out of it will become tummy. Omler of Chizda. Rav Chizda says now to Rav Acha by Rav Avya, Man Tzayislach u Rav Yochanan Rabach, who is going to listen to you, Rav Acha by Rav Avya, and to Rav Yochanan, your teacher. Interesting. V'chituma sheboyen le'echa halcha. Rav Yochanan, so Rav Chizda says, this makes no sense. If the grape became tame, then the juice became tame. And we're, like, why all of a sudden when you squeeze the grape, is the juice tahor? What happened to the tumah? The grape was tummy, I thought. So Amok Sava Mashkimi Bala Blie. Aha. So we see that Rabbi Yochanan's opinion is that the juice of a grape is not, you know, just contained in the grape. It's not separate from the grape. It's actually part of the grape. And therefore, when the grape becomes tummy, the juice becomes tummy. Behavior the itamule ochla, itamule mashkin. And once the grape becomes tummy, so does the juice that's inside of it. To which Rav Acha by Rav Avya says to Rav Chizda, don't you agree with me that the juice of a grape is just contained inside? It's not actually part of the grape. But we learn in a Mishnah, Now, after all, we learned in the Mishnah that we quoted earlier that if you have a Tmei Mes, an Avatuma, who squeezes exactly a Kibetza's worth of, uh, of grapes. So, the juice is going to be tar. So, Iyamad B'Shalom Yipakad Pekide, so I understand if we say that the juice is separate from the grape, that's why, as long as you're squeezing a cluster that's less than a kibetza, so the gray, the juice will remain tahor. It won't become tummy. You don't have a, a, you have less than a kibetza. So, no, it's, well, meaning if, if it's exactly a kibetza, so by the time you squeeze it, it's less than a kibetza, and therefore it's unable to transfer tumma to this juice. So the juice never became tummy. It remains tahor. And Rav Acha Breder of Avya says, you see, doesn't that prove, like me, that the juice is separate from the grape. It never became, you know, while the grape was tamay, the juice remained tahor. And as long as it's exactly a kibetza, when you squeeze it, it'll become less than a kibetza. And it won't, they won't, it will be unable to transfer tumma to the juice and the juice will remain tahor. Eli Amad Bala Blie, but continues Rav Acha by Rav Avi, and he says, but Rav Chizda, if it's like you, that the juice is absorbed in the grape and the juice is tamay like the grape, well then am I tahorin? Why should the juice be tahor when um, the cluster is exactly the size of an egg? Because just like you said, Rav Chizda, what happened to the tuma? The juice was tame. Why is it all of a sudden tahor? So Amalei, so Rav Chizda responds to Rav Achabed, Rav Avya, Achab Ma'eskinim Banovim Shulu Huchshu. Interesting. So here with this Tmei Meis, with this avatuma who's squeezing these grapes, and we're saying that if it's a, exactly a kibetza, so then will, everything will remain tahor, well, it's talking about anavim shalom huchshu. It's talking about grapes that had never gotten wet before. And because they had never gotten wet, so then they were unable to attract tumah. Now, le'emos miskashre. Now, at what point would they become muchshu le'kavu tumah? Well, at the point that you squeeze this cluster of grapes that's exactly a beitza, and now the juice comes out, at that point, now... The 
grapes would be able to be to contract tumma from this avatuma. Now kisachelu, but at the same time, at once he has crushed these grapes, but lushiura, there's no longer a kibetza, and therefore they're no longer able to transfer tumma by way of the grape. The, the grapes are no longer, even though they become tummy from him, they are unable to transfer the tumma to the juice. The ilote malachi, and then Rav Chizda continues to prove his point that the grapes themselves, because that the juice themselves are part of the grapes and become tummy with the grapes. Hadatani, that which we learn in a brisa, lamaze dome, that when Rabbi Kiva said to Rabbi Yochanan Benuri that what is chametz of truma similar to the truma stutin vanovim? It's similar to the truma tamea of mulberries and grapes. Shenitmea. That they became tame, she ain lo ba lo heter achila velo heter asaka, that don't have any right, right that you're unable to eat them and you're also unable to burn them. Now ha heter achila nami isbe di bai darich lu pachus pachus mikebeitza. Now according to you, Rav Acha Breder of Avia, what do you mean that the uh, truma of mulberries and of grapes that became tame, all right? There's you can't do anything with them. You can't eat them. You can't burn them. What do you mean you can't eat them? Why don't you just squeeze the grapes less than a kibetza and then you could drink the juice? What's the problem? So rather it must be that the um, juice itself becomes tame as well. So Omar Rava, Rava responds for Evacha Breder of Avya and he says, no, you can actually say that the juice does remain tahor. So then why would you be unable to squeeze them and get the juice. So Gizera, Amarava Gizera, Dilma Asi Buli De Takala. Well, because maybe while you're squeezing them to get the juice, uh, you know, in, le- in, in clusters of less than four, uh, less than an uh, egg, so maybe you'll end up, you know, eating some of the grapes and that would be a problem. So we say, just avoid it. But even though Meikra didn't, you could argue that the, that the juice would be Tahor. Amale Abai, Umichashino Takala. Abai says, yeah, but are we really concerned about that? That like you can end up creating a mess and, and, and like eating these grapes that are, uh, that are truma tmea. But we said that you're allowed to light a, a, a candle with bread or with, um, oil of truma that became tame. Why aren't we concerned about maybe you'll end up like eating the bread or the, or the oil? So Amrle, so Rava says, yeah, pas zarikle bena eitzim. Well, because the bread you're just going to throw among the among the tree, I guess in the fire. Shemen shel truma rami le bichlimos, and the oil of truma you could just put into like a disgusting vessel, and then then you won't end up um, eating that. Like we saw a few weeks ago with regard to um, the vat, right? When the tuma with the vat that the uh, that the um, we said that if there's like there was an afkamina between oil and, and wine in terms of uh, being considered losing it, anyways. Okay, well that was daf lam and gimel of masechet b'sachim. Yeah, it got like a little complicated, I guess. But all right, well it happens sometimes. So I think the first interesting sugi that we got to is the punishment for meila. Um, yeah, so so there's machlokas there uh, uh, between Rebbe and the chacham. So now, of course, if you um, get benefit from hektish by accident. So you bring in Asher Me'ilos. If you get a, hekt- a benefit from Hektish on purpose, that's what we're talking about. So Rebbe says you're Chayv Misa Bidei Shamayim. And according to the Chacham, it's just a lav. We'll give you some Malkus. And okay, that took us for a while. And then we got to this Machlokas regarding the Tuma of grape juice. Rav Acha Breder of Avya said the name of Rabbi Yochanan that, that the Juice of the of the grapes are mipakid pakid. They are considered separate from the grape, and therefore, even if the grapes become tame, the juice will remain tahor, and therefore, you have to make sure that they remain tahor and do not become tame from the outside peels. And Rav Chizda disagreed and said that the juice is actually part of the grape. It's mibala blie. It's part of the grape, and therefore, if the grape becomes tame, the um, juice becomes tame as well. All right, those are like kind of the main things I think of Daf Lamed Gibba. Hope you enjoyed. Peace out.